Hello everyone, I'm Robert Icy. Most of you will know me, but for you that don't, I'm the UK's number one unconscious mind therapist. And welcome to the Mindclap podcast. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us at the Mindclap podcast. I'm Robert Icy, the UK's number one unconscious mind therapist, and we're joined today with Jamie O'Hara, um, Sky Sports pundit, um, radio presenter for Talk Sport, and also Billa Ricky Town Manager. Um, so thank you for joining us today, Jamie. No worries, mate. It's a pleasure as usual. Thank you, son. Thank you. So what I was going to um, talk to you a little bit about is Jamie, sort of tell us a little bit about the beginning of your career because you know everyone knows who you are now. But what was Jamie R before the Premiership player? What was you like as a kid growing up? What was the you know your mindset behind the football? Yeah. The, the dedication. Well, listen, I, I, about that? I had a great. I was had a fantastic upbringing. You know, a close knit family. Um, I always had a drive as a young boy. Just I wanted to be a football player. You know that was my dream um, to to be a, a player in the Premiership. Um, I wanted to play for Tottenham, and I always visualised from from the start as a young kid of uh, having the drive and the determination to make it as a footballer. And I was very lucky that I had the talent, which helped. Yeah. You know, I, I was a talented uh, uh, young lad. But do you think that the focus of the vision creates the talent because it, it creates that? that desire to want to learn do you think a hundred percent i mean i was always wanting to learn i was always wanting to improve i always had a drive to be better than everyone else as a young kid um you know i didn't have many mates in football when i was a young lad because i always had just a a, a channel vision i thought you know just to be like i'm gonna get to the top and when i get to the top is where is the, that's the pinnacle of playing in the premier league and i just but, had that channel vision to do that. i think that is the commitment to most of the elite sort of mindset you know like your world champions and I was um, lucky enough to have a conversation with Peter Crash about four weeks ago in Portugal and he said the same as you that he never had no childhood he said I never had, I think he said I was never had a girlfriend until I was 23 he said I was just so committed oh, I had plenty of birds <laughs> <laughs> I just, well, yeah. just, just didn't uh, just put them to one put, side, put to yeah. side yeah. <laughs> they were after football <laughs> yeah. no I mean listen yeah I, 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 I sacrificed a lot as a young mm. kid you know I didn't go out I never, I never drunk till I was sort of nineteen, really. You know, yeah. never touched alcohol, uh, didn't go out partying. You know, I was just so focused on. I'd play on a Saturday and then I'd go home and then I'd, I'd, I'd watch match of the day and I'd want to just think about foot. It was football, football. Because I remember, I know your family for years, all from Bermondsey, um, and I remember when you was a kid, you think you got first picked up with was it Arsenal? Your first, your first. I was at Chelsea, Chelsea when I was oh, seven. Yeah. Oh, was you? Yeah, so I was at Chelsea when I was seven. I got picked up playing in a cup final for a Sunday league team, Sutton Dynamos. Um, so I went to Chelsea when I was seven, which was obviously young, you know, and mm. I played under nines. Um, and then when I was 11, uh, I, I left and went to Arsenal because Arsenal had the best academy. They had the best setup at that age, you know, when I was a young kid and they were the best in the country. So I went there and that's where I really developed. Uh, you know, I had a fantastic... Uh, upbringing at Arsenal Football Club, who, who were brilliant with me, and when I got to 17, they 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 loved me. Arsenal, they wanted me to stay. They offered me a pro contract, but I wanted to I wanted to play. You know, I was yeah. I was ready to play in the first team. They didn't see me playing in the first team until I was sort of 21. But in my mind, you was ready. I was ready. Yeah. You know, I wanted to play. So. Um, I left and went to Tottenham. Spurs come in for me. They paid a few quid for me. Plus, that's your team, isn't it? Plus, it was my team. And it was always my dream to, to play for Spurs one day. And, you know, that was the opportunity that I got given. So, um, you know, I left Arsenal, went to Spurs. And then, you know, I eventually made it playing for Spurs in the Premier League, which was, you know, obviously the dream that How I always had. How was it when you got your first Premier contract? How did that feel? What, was, what Do you remember that day? What happened? Um, it? it was, yeah, I mean, the, the debut or the contract. The contract, when you first knew you was going Prem, when, when you first got to Prem. I mean, when I when I first got that uh, opportunity to, to to all of a sudden play for Spurs and be involved at Spurs, it was an amazing feeling, right? I mean, it was something I'd always dreamed of. It was something I've always focused on uh, to get to, and I just have that sort of it was almost like a relief, you know, of all that the, the years the hard of work, yeah, the hard work and the struggle of like you know every every weekend focusing like being the best, being the best. What can I do to make myself the best? All of a sudden, get it. You know, it was almost like a weight off your shoulders a little yeah. bit. Then you could kind of then, what's the next step? You know, what's the next goal? Where's the next thing? And that's what I've achieved, what I've set out to achieve as a young kid. Mm. I've got that now. Where's the, where's the next thing I can do? And um, don't forget you play for me as well. Come on, you Lions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, again, brilliant okay. club. You know? Yeah, did you enjoy it there? I loved it there. Brilliant club. You know, all my family from Bermondsey. So it was yeah. that was another stepping stone to get into where I wanted to be. And that was, you know, it was small steps. Sometimes I had to take steps back. Was you at Pompey? 
Yeah, went to Portsmouth on loan again, but that was after I okay. obviously played for Spurs. But I went to Chesterfield uh, when I was sort of 18, you know, 17, 18. I went there, and it was all stepping stones to get to where I wanted to get to. So mentally, on the on the journey, where where did you find your best sort of mindset where, where, throughout your career? When would you say the best focused Jamie O'Hara was? The when, most I was when I was when I was a kid. When you was a kid? Yeah, when I was a kid, that, growing up from a young age, because my mindset was just so solely focused on one goal. You know, it was because we, we I met, you know, we come to, I uh, got a retreat in my back called the List of Retreat, and yeah. we was at, and I showed you the reticular activating system, which um, at the beginning of the podcast I'm talking about to people, and at the end of it I'm going to show them um, how, to, how the focus of, of the mind works. But you know, um, with the RS system, when you watch that, you sort of I remember you sitting there thinking, "Fuck, I can't understand it now." Like, yeah. I've done that. I didn't know I was doing it. Yeah. You, you didn't know. You said I didn't even know I was visualizing. Didn't so even I just, know. Yeah. I was just doing it all the time. Yeah. Well, I talk, obviously, we've talked about visualizations loads. And, yeah. You know, I always had them visualizations as a kid of I'm going to play for Tottenham or I'm going to play in the Premier League. Mm. I'm going to play for England. Because you and even said you, when you was on the pitch, it. you said you used to come out and visualize the game before the game. Of yeah, yeah. Like that. I used to walk out on the pitch and I used to dream about. The game, the, the game, the next day. Like, so we're, we're playing on a Saturday. I was, dr I was already dreaming about the, the, the way I was going to play on a Friday night. And then when I'd walk out onto a football pitch, I'd spend five, ten minutes in the warm up. Just, you know, I'd just shut off and just think about the first ten, fifteen minutes of a game of where I'm going to be. And and it was amazing how many times it, it, comes, them it things, doubled up. Yeah, yeah, them things doubled up. Yeah, like, and it, it was, and I always, always do it now. If I go out, if I'm playing, or I'm still playing, you know just five, ten minutes of, you know, where you think the first 10, 15 passes of you're going to make. And all it's crazy how it, it used to just come into action. Yeah. It was it was like, it, was, it, was, it was already happening. It was already, yeah, it was already, it was already there. It was already programmed. Well, this is funny. I, I worked with um, Frank McClintock, you obviously know him. I think he helped Johnny Dockett in me all back in the day. I think he managed Arsenal. I'm not sure. I think he did in the 80s. But um, Frank McClintock played for only first division teams when it was first division against Georgie Best and that. And he told me a story. I said to him, it was 72 or 73 when I met Frank. And I said, Frank, do you ever use any visualisations? And he turned around with his Scottish accent and said, um, you're the second person in my whole career that asked me that. And I said, well, what happened? He said, well, when I was a little kid, my mum used to read me stories. And he said, she'd read me a story before I went to bed. And then she'd walk out of the room. I'd turn over on my side and I'd visualise playing football with my mates. He said, I'd done it every day. He said, it'd become an habit. I didn't mean to do it. Mm. He said, but I'd done it every day. She'd come in, read me stories. She went out and it'd become an habit into my um, amateur career, right through my professional career. And he said, it, it, it gave me the deja vu moments. He said, because I visualised football so much. I'm like, not meaning to. I was just saying, I just did. I said, an habit. Yeah. He said, I'd be on the pitch and I'd jump in the air and I'd head butt a ball and, f and every game I had this, he said at some point, I think, did I did I head that? He said, before my feet even touched the floor because yeah. my body would react quicker yeah, than yeah. my mind could think. Did, yeah. did you have anything like that? All the time. I mean, if you ask a lot of Premier League footballers, I think Jose Mourinho actually spoke about it the other day. He's like, when you talk about players, it's like they don't have to think much. Yeah, they've done it, all that. It, it's just been that, in the it, mind. It's there. Yeah. You know, like when you watch the elite players play, you think, oh, how's he done that? Or how's he thought of that? Or how? Because they've, it's already Thought, yeah, programmed. It's already they've programmed. Seen it they've they've first, seen it a million yeah, yeah. times. They've already visualised them things happening in their brain. And you know when you and that's the elite level of footballers where they do things without even thinking about it because it's already they've already visualised it in their brains way before it's even come yeah. to you know before it's, it's even come to their feet. It's the same as boxing, golf. All the, all the elite players I talk to, they all, they all say the same. I've got to finish this Frank story. It's really funny because he went to me after. He went, his wife come in. I forgot her name. She's a lovely lady. And she, he said, um, when she first moved in, you know, I was lying in bed asleep and she went to me, whack, whooped me around the head. I went, what are you doing? What are you hitting me for? He went, what have I done here? He went, he went she's clumped me again. I go, what are you, you hitting me for? She went, you just kicked me, you bastard. So when, <laughs> when he was going to kick me, he used to boot her. And she said, to, she said to me, the next day she went and bought pillars. So for all through their married career, like while he's playing football, they slept yeah. with pillars between their legs because he'd. I always used to kick. My missus <laughs> says it all the time, and I, I, I always used to. She was like, "You're constantly kicking in your sleep. You're constantly kicking." It was like because I was dreaming about football. football. All the time. She was like, "You're, you're driving me mad. <laughs> Stop kicking me in the bed." And the one time she started getting worried about me was when I stopped kicking, kicking in in the bed. She was like, "You've stopped. You've something's you've, wrong. You've, you've, something's wrong." And she was and right. Was there? Yeah, 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 that was, yeah. I'd I'd lost the the, the drive and vision. The, the vision of it, and you know, like. I'd, but we, was, me when and you stop that. Me and you spoke about this many times, and I know you've you'd love to get in. You said to me about love to get into FA, and maybe me and you one day helping football players because you said about um, it's okay having a vision. A lot of them get the vision un unconsciously; they don't know they're doing it. Yeah. But when they get there, they don't raise their standard. They don't then go right. I'm here. I'm at me. Well, I'm at, yeah. I'm at um, Liverpool yeah. right now. I want to be the best goal scorer for um, Liverpool. I want to be the the um, you know I want to play for the England team. 
or something like yeah. you know, they don't a lot of well, players don't raise their standards. Well, you look and at that's Deli, when they go downhill. You look at Deli Ali for an example, right? Who's a fantastic Premier League footballer who's had scored fifty goals in the Premier League. He had burst on the scene because he had a drive and a determination to get to where he got yeah. to. And then now you look at him, he's out of the squad, he's not playing, he's not involved. Because he's lost his he's lost his visualization to set another so, yeah, goal. He's not raised his he's standards. He's not raised his standards to go right. I've I've achieved this, which was an incredible achievement, and loads of footballers do that, right? When they burst on the scene, like I've done it, got on the scene playing. But then a lot of players lose that sort of target of being like, right, I've got the big contract now. I've got the big money. I've got the nice house. I've got the nice bird. You know, what's the next step? There isn't one. They haven't they haven't said it in their brain because they've achieved everything they ever thought they were going to achieve. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. When you get there, staying there is the hardest thing because you've got to reset switch. and switch and go again and, and set a new target. And you see this with all sports with like Conor McGregor, massive into visualisation, talks about he's been beginning to law of attraction. Um, and the minute he got to where he wanted to be, he sort of come down here a little bit, didn't he? But you see like he's refocused now, he's learnt the hard way, but he's yeah, like, yeah. right, get the ego back out, let's go out to scratch, let's get the exactly. next vision and Listen, it's tough, do what's right? got to be done. It's life, yeah. right? You know, all of a sudden you're getting yeah, everything yeah. you've ever dreamed of. It's very difficult to yeah. not go and spend the spend nice it, yeah, cars yeah. and do nice things Politics, and all of a sudden, yeah. you know, you, your mindset will change and the you way you live You get caught in the here and now, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you too get much. caught in the here and now and we only have one life, you know, yeah. like you want to enjoy it as yeah. well, but you've also got to understand is, is to stay there at the elite is very, very difficult, difficult. because there's always someone else who's going to come. Yeah. There's always going to be another Conor this McGregor. Right. There's going to be another Dele, Dele I'm, Alli. I'm working with a boxer at the moment, a world champion, Anna Rankin. Lovely, lovely girl. She was the first Scottish um, world champion ever, female. Um, and she had her, well, she won it. And she said the same. I got put into the next fight too quick. And I didn't think I had to train as hard. I was just sort of like, I weren't in that determination, that yeah. focus bubble, and she, she ended up losing the next one. Yeah. Very split decision, but um, now she's fighting for WBO in two weeks' time. Yeah. Um, what happened to so Joshua? She Same raised thing with Joshua. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with him, you know? Like he, was, so he, he, knew, yeah, exactly, he was at the top yeah. and he fought real easy, didn't yeah. train hard enough, he didn't have the vision, didn't have the. Yeah, didn't the, have no the, respect. No the, respect. Yeah, he didn't have the target, the goal, or the end goal of he thought, ah, oh, just turn yeah. up, we'll win this yeah. one, we'll move on got beat P down, you know yeah. because, because you know you have to have that drive and the determination yeah. whatever it is whether it's football boxing you know working in an office and it all you comes know, from all, the self-talk and the visualisation it, that it all comes from that them, them targets that you want to set for yourself you know so it's the emotional experience you feel did you did you ever when you walked on the pitch did you actually feel differently did like some players talk about that you actually step out the focus kicks in like a boxer going into a fight yeah, yeah. did the footballers go through well, that when I, was at the approach? when I was at the top of my game I used to walk on that pitch and knew I was going to play well I never had a bad game yeah. because I, I was in such a mindset where I was like nothing's going to stop me you know yeah. like you know and nothing's going to stop me from being where I want to be and have that drive and determination when I started sort of filtering away and my career caught, you know going the other way was I, I, I wasn't going out there with that same positive mentality, you know, I was worrying about my guy, oh, I'm not fit or I'm not 100% or, you know, I, I didn't have the confidence in myself which I had before. Yeah. Um, and that took me a while, you know, once I started losing that positive mindset was when actually I started to doubt myself and, and, then, and then I did start to spiral, you know? Yeah. Okay. So now when you got to Tottenham and um, as I say, you was... Um, in the elite level yeah. and you said you got stuck at this you got caught in the here and now what would your advice be to other players that get to that level and what what would you say or managers even I mean yeah. I, I believe it's a lot to do with the managers need educating in this not just the, not just the players because the, the people are looking out for them need to yeah. be able to go right listen you got it now kid get your right down I, fuck, you know kick back up you've got to go up a level now yeah for me I mean it's a, for me it's about focus right you, you, you've achieved everything you've wanted to achieve in life right but getting to where you wanted to get to but you, that's not the end goal mm. right you're still a young lad if you're a young professional like you know myself or Deli Ali or whatever you know a lot of footballers you have to reset a visualisation of right I've achieved what I wanted to achieve I've reached where I wanted to get to now I need to set myself a new goal and a new target to be yeah. to push you on again because otherwise if you stay you know on a on a even kill you'll drop away because there's always other someone than, wants someone more than wants more than you so yeah. i got comfortable right i got comfortable in my career thinking i've got a nice big contract got a nice house i'm having a nice life i'm playing in the premier league but i didn't have a goal to, to be next like level. where am i going where's the next level where's yes. the next step for jamie Ara? I, I i was just i'm playing 
You just play. You know, I'm just playing, and it's like it was great, but I didn't have that drive and determination to to set something bigger. So which you, know? you think saying that you maybe should have done now. And knowing what yeah. you know about the mind now, you'd go back. You, if you had another chance, you'd Listen, be like. Listen, when I made obviously at Tottenham, if, if I knew what I know now about my brain and the way yeah. it works, I would have set a bigger goal. Yes. You know, like I would have set a goal to be like, right, I'm going to play 30 games for England. I want yeah, 30 yeah. England caps. I might have got one. Yeah, but at least you'd have but only then, for but the then, stars. But yeah. then I, I would have reached for the stars. Yeah. You know, instead of being comfortable of, I'm playing for Tottenham, I'm playing in the Premier League, this yeah. is going to last forever. It doesn't, right? It doesn't last forever. So you have to keep setting a new target to push yourself, to push yourself. I stopped pushing myself. Yeah, that's good though, John. That's, that's really good to, for people to hear that. And um, I think it's, it means a lot in in life in general. Like I get a lot of clients um, come to me and I go, what do you want in life? And they go, I just want to be content. Mm. I go, no, you fucking don't want to be content. It's the worst place to be. And I yeah. get a lot of clients, I'm depressed. I don't know what I'm depressed for. I've got a lovely husband. I've got a nice car. Yeah. got a big ass. got a few people with kids and I'm depressed. That's fucking why you're depressed yeah. because you've, you've hit all your targets yeah. and you ain't raising, you know, raising, risen your standards. You know, yeah. you've got to rise them fucking standards. And that's everyone, like from a mum to an asswife to a, to, to well, listen, we, I talk, we, I, I'm talking now, you know, like in terms of my life at the moment, like I'm working on Talk Sport, I'm, yeah. I'm a manager of Billericay, I'm working for Sky, right? They're, these are all things two years ago that we talked, talked about. about yeah, and you've done it, wanted, yeah. right? And now I've got it. I remember you've talking about visualising, yeah, visualising it all. working on Sky, yeah, visualising being a manager, visualising being a Talk Sport presenter. You even said it on one of the Talk Sport things before. I remember you talking about it on one of them that you was, you was talking about how you're visualising being for Sky. And, and since that, since you've, Put it down to practice. You've just flown up. Yeah, you? you got your own show on Talksport now. Show on Talksport. Friday doing, at but, seven. Is it but, seven? Yeah, Friday seven o'clock. I have my own show now on Talksport. I present the show, so which is incredible, Amazing, right? Yeah. An incredible journey that I've been on. But my missus is like, we've got everything we've all, you know. You're every, and I'm like, I'm not happy. No, I'm not happy. You know, I, wanna, I, I, I want. I want more. I want yeah. more. Because you know, like, yeah. now I'm like, no, I'm not content now. With, because before I would have been like, well, I've got yeah, there. put your feet. I, up. I put my feet up, chill, lovely, getting three days a week on talk sport. This is great. Yeah, that's you know? what happens. That's when you start going out boozy. Yeah, and, boozy. Yeah, and fucking now, getting caught in the here and now a little bit yeah, too much. Now I'm like, nope, I'm not happy. I'm I'm going again. What's the next step? Like the yeah, next good. step is like you know. I want to be more on talk sport. Yeah. I want to be presenting, you know, a show at, on the breakfast show, which yes. is the big one. You know, I want to instead of doing the Sky stuff, I want to be on the Super Sunday. You know, yeah, doing, yeah. Not presenting that like Gary Lineker. Yeah, you know, like you have to keep pushing yourself to to you know set goals to not feel comfortable. I the the worst state that I could ever put myself in now is that comfortable state. Yes. As soon as I got comfortable in life was when things started to stop going well. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. Um, I hope you're enjoying this because um, that is some powerful stuff coming from Jamie now. Um, so uh, once you've um, once you got into, how did that come about anyway? The talk sport. How did you? How did that manifest um, itself? It was. I just got, had a phone call about coming on to talk about Spurs. You know, and you know, I, I had a phone call, and then and then there was another phone call, and then so they just liked the way you. They liked the way I talked, and then it was like, and then I and then I started driving them mad. Can I come in? Can I come in? You know, I, I haven't had an agent. I haven't got yeah. an agent. I do it myself. You know, I, you know, phoned up. Can I come in? And it just went from there. You know, I'd research, I'd prepare, I would do everything right. So when I went in there, I was ready. You know, I was ready for any question. When preparation meets opportunity, they yeah, say, yeah. and I, I prepared and I prepared and I knew what was coming I knew what the questions and then you know and then it was like wow this you know he, he's taking it serious because you get a lot of people who go, might go on there and, and sound good but they, they, then they filter away but I was always like right get me on I want to do this test me on this and ask me that question and you know and I always had a good on. I think the best thing with me on talk sport is, is I'm honest honest yeah I give an honest opinion like yeah. I'm so how it is I'm, I'm not it. Paul Scholes I'm not yeah. Steven Gerrard you know yeah. like but I've played in the Premier League yeah. I've been there I've done it so I, I, my opinion matters, you know. Like yes. I, I give it an honest opinion. Some people like it, some, some people, people might not. Yeah. But at least it, it's coming from that happens with success, don't it? Not everyone's going to agree, but that's that's the idea of discussions, isn't it? I, I realised very quick, right, that you know, in life, that you can't you can't please everyone, mm. you know. But you need to you need to worry about the people that care about you and the people that love you, um, and and as long as you're happy in yourself and where you're going with your life. Then that's everything all else is yeah, falls into place. Yeah. And how do you find it being a manager at Billericay um, Town Football Club? How do you find it with a, with your experience? I bet the I bet the players, the young players, look up to you. You know, you've been Premier player. Um, do, do you bring a lot of them? We well, obviously do bring a lot of them skills into the team. And yeah, of course. I mean, I try to use all my experiences that I've had in the game and bring them into a football club. You can see, like, we've got a, you know, we've amazing what we've done here. The transformation of the football club, you know, like it, it's unbelievable. So now it's just like bringing all that. Experience that I've got, 
um, and pushing it into players and helping them out, you know, because there's some talented people in non-league, you know, and I think a lot of players in non-league are players who haven't quite had the opportunity to to make it where they think they would have made but it. This is where and they fall the visualization. I say it's about boxers as well. How come you only get not even one percent make it the British champion, let world champion? Now there's, there's thousands of boxers that, that could knock you out in a, with a left hook today. Yeah. But how come none of them make it? And it is some of them just see themselves fighting and they see only the next fight. Yeah. Coming yeah, yeah. up, yeah, they do one at a time. But it's the guys that are seeing themselves as British champion and world champion at the beginning that have that drive to go through. And I do think, like if you look at semi-pro football and pro football, as you said, fitness might be a little bit different. But overall, it, they both they both curl the ball. They both know how to yeah. hit the shots. Oh yeah. But it's the mindset and the, and it's belief, right? The belief, it's, yeah. It's the belief. So a lot of these players, uh, I've tried to get players in from. You know, teams who uh, they've they've uh, they got a belief in themselves. You know, these players want to push. They're hungry. Mm. Right? You've got to be hungry to be successful, and you've got to believe in yourself to be successful. So, if you can put a load of group of players like that together, a lot of a lot of players at this level are the same technically, ability wise, talent wise. Yeah. They're all the same. Yeah. But the ones that are successful and the ones that get promoted are the teams that believe in each other and believe that they're hungry for success. Yeah. If you can get a group of players that do that then you're on to a winner. You can just stand there on the side and just watch them because they're going to do it for you. Yeah, yeah, they're going to take over. Yeah. So what's the plans for the future, Jane? What, you got anything coming up? Spurs manager. Spurs manager. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's a vision and a half, that one. Yeah, that'd be brilliant, Jane. No, I do. I was, yeah, listen, it's, it's you know, all possible. I've always, I said this to you, right? Possible. I said, like, you never know in life. Who was that team? Sunderland. Used, yeah. That was it, yeah. yeah you so said you used to always dream, visualize dreaming of it, yeah. Kept dreaming about being the Sunderland manager. Phone call's right? going to come. Get so, on it. Get on it. He's your man. <laughs> you never know, do you, right? But you've got to reach for the stars, you yeah. know? Like, just keep reach doing for what the I'm stars doing. and leash you at the moon, they say, didn't exactly, they? Exactly, yeah. So if I fall just below that, I'll be happy. But um, we can talk some bollocks, us Burmese boys, don't we? <laughs> we I wouldn't come up for air yet, have yeah. we, Sam? But um, no, I, um, I really appreciate your time today, Jame. Um, and everyone, um, thank you for tuning in to Mindkite. We'll be back again next week. And um, thank you to our, our wonderful guest, Jamie O'Hara, um, fantastic talker. And keep tuned to Talk Sport. Um, Friday nights, 7, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. See you later.